G'day mates, Captain Doug here. Welcome to Houseboats 101. Just like a land-based house, a houseboat contains a plumbing system. However, unlike a regular house, a houseboat has to do more. In this episode, we will examine the various water systems on a houseboat. We will look at the types of water and how they're used, and some of the specific features you'll find in a houseboat that you won't find at home. Houseboaters divide their water into three categories, fresh water, grey water, and black water. Later, I'm going to add a fourth category, seawater. Now these three categories don't describe the actual colour of the water, it's more like where they come from. Let's start with the fresh water, at least we can all agree what that is. We use a drinking water suitable hose connected to the boat by a quick connect fitting and running to the dock supply where we have a water filter. It's always a good idea never to leave this water fitting turned on. A plumbing issue inside the boat could end up filling it with water and that's not an ideal situation. When the temperature drops below freezing, the marina will shut off water to the docks and disconnect any fittings attached to their faucets to prevent pipes from bursting. The water from the dock is fed into the boat's fresh water system and used throughout the boat. But before it goes to showers, vanities, sinks, hot water tanks and the like, it goes to the manifold. Water manifolds like this one started appearing on boats around the year 2000. The fact that they appeared on all newer houseboats makes me think they were mandated by the American Boat and Yacht Council. This manifold controls the distribution of all fresh water to the fittings on the boat and allows you to open and shut off supply as needed, particularly when winterizing the boat. While we're at the manifold, it's easy to see the type of water pipes used in the supply plumbing. This type of pipe is called PEX, which is an acronym for cross-linked polyethylene. The boat manufacturer has distinguished between hot and cold water using red for hot, which makes sense, and blue for cold. A word of warning to owners who attempted to replace some of their PEX fittings on their boat. Check that you have the right fitting first. Marine manufacturers have and may still use metric 15 millimeter pipe throughout the boat and not the half inch type found at a hardware store. Half inch connectors put on a 15 millimeter pipe will leak. The freshwater tanks are located below deck. This is done for two reasons. One, is that it makes it more sense to have the water stored close to where most of the plumbing is located. The other is concerned with potential ballast. All the tanks are connected together and are filled together. The tanks are filled by turning on the valve at the manifold, assuming the dock water supply is on. You don't really have to stand and watch them fill up. Once filled, the excess water will start to come out the overflow and be directed overboard. When you hear the water coming out here, you just turn off the inlet valve. At about nine pounds per gallon, our four water tanks, when filled, weigh about one and a half tons. Having that weight in the bottom of the boat keeps the center of gravity of the boat lower and makes it more stable. However, 
Since the tanks are located in the bottom of the boat, gravity can't be used to feed the various fittings in the boat, so a pump is required. This pump is designed to start on demand. That is, as soon as someone turns on a faucet, the pump detects a drop in the water pressure in the system and it turns on to keep the pressure up. The boat can just use the dock supply when connected. Dock water can come through the manifold and provide fresh water to all the boat's plumbing fittings. Of course, when away from the dock, or when water is unavailable, the boat can draw water from the tanks as its water supply. It's even possible to supply the plumbing system with both dock water and tank water at the same time. This may be necessary when you need more water pressure if a number of faucets or showers are being used simultaneously. Our fresh water tanks have a level indication system to monitor how full or empty the tanks are. This system passes a small electrical signal through these strips and gauges the water height in the tank based on the signal return. Remember, when away from the dock, or dock water is unavailable, you only have the water that's in the tanks, so use it carefully. Of course, there's not much use in a plumbing system if all it has is cold water. So our boat does have a hot water supply system. This system uses two 20 gallon tanks plumbed in series to give a total of 40 gallons. They constructed in this way because of the height limitations below deck, just over two feet. This can be an issue when replacing hot water tanks on older boats. New tanks, made to change EPA regulations, require more insulation and therefore are taller for the same capacity. If you need to replace your hot water tanks, you can find smaller capacity tanks that will fit in this same area. Now let's look at the grey water system. Grey water is defined as fresh water that's been used in some way, either by a shower, a sink, a dishwasher or a washing machine there must be some way to get rid of this water. All the waste water from these sources flows into a large waste pipe that runs the length of the boat and ends in a discharge outlet going into the lake. Some older houseboats may take the grey water directly from each source and discharge it straight into the lake, not using a large waste pipe. This requires more through-hull exit ports around the boat. There may be some areas of the country, for example the left coast, that require grey water to be collected in separate tanks and pumped out at pumping stations. But in all my five houseboats, I've never seen one with a grey water tank. Obviously, it's easier to convert a direct discharge boat to a grey water tank boat by having one large waste pipe collecting all the sources together first. Next in line is the black water system. Our boat has two black water holding tanks below deck. Each one of these tanks is plumbed directly to one of the two toilets we have. Some boats will use flexible sanitation pipes to make these connections. However, these flexible pipes are prone to absorb and permeate some of the contents to the air inside the hull. They require changing a number of times over the lifetime of the boat, or you begin to get what we call old houseboat smell, or OHS. I've had to do this on a couple of our previous houseboats, and I can tell you, it's not a pleasant job. Fortunately, our boat uses solid PVC pipes, like you would get in your house. 
These types of pipes do not absorb any sewerage and therefore prevent the hull from smelling of sewer. Where we do have flexible pipes, these that go to the pump out ports on the side of the boat, their angle of installation prevents any liquids sitting in the pipes over an extended period of time. Each tank has a ventilation port to the outside of the boat. These are required because when you flush a toilet, liquids and other things get emptied into the holding tank, increasing the level in the tank. The air inside the tank needs to get out somewhere or you would get a pressure buildup. Most houseboats, except for this one for some reason, have air filters in the vent lines to reduce the smell being inflicted on your neighbours. We just hope the wind is blowing the other way. Air filters need to be changed at regular intervals as well. Not quite as messy as changing out your sewerage flexible pipes. All houseboats come with a level checking system installed when they were built. I bet none of them are still working today. The problem is this. The solids inside the tank build up around the sensors and prevent them from working properly. I tried to fit the same electronic signal sensor system on these tanks that I have on the freshwater tanks. It doesn't work reliably, so this is my solution. Climb into the hull and use a flashlight to see the actual level in the tank. Not very elegant, but it is accurate. You might have noticed that the tank contents appear a blue-green colour. We will look at what causes that when we examine the toilet. Black water sources, the toilets that is, use lake water for their source. After all, we are going to pump the sewer tanks out into a sewer system at the fuel dock, so why waste good fresh water? As long as the boat is sitting in water, you will be able to flush the toilets, and you won't have to worry if you've used up all your fresh water beforehand. This pump you see here pumps lake water into the toilet when a switch on the toilet is pressed. However, some boats use water from the fresh water system using the fresh water pump, and some systems use what is called a vacuum flush, kind of like an aircraft toilet. Up in the bathroom, we find one of the sources of the black water, a toilet. These toilets are not what they seem from a cursory inspection. Inside this type of toilet is what is called a macerator pump. This type of pump not only sucks out the contents in the bowl when flushed, but grinds it up into small particles to make it easier to pipe and faster to break down in the tank. They are, however, rather delicate little things and easily get clogged, requiring you to remove the toilet and clear out the macerator. This horrible experience can be avoided by making sure your guests only use approved toilet paper and nothing else. And this is where that colour you saw in the holding tank comes from. It's a deodorant fed from a tank conveniently located under the bathroom vanity. Each time the toilet is flushed, some of the deodorant is added to the flushing water and ultimately down into the holding tank. There are many types of tank deodorants. I eventually settled on this one as my favourite. Finally, there are some black water systems on houseboats that use what is called a Type 1 marine sanitation device, or MSD. These systems process the black water down to a level where it can be discharged directly into the lake. However, they can only be used on waterways where such discharge is permitted. The next source of water used on our boat is seawater, or in our case, lake water.
Our boat has six consumers of lake water. We've already looked at the toilets and how they use lake water. Now let's look at the water slide. The water slide gets its water from a through hull located in the engine bay. Let's look at a typical through hull. The pipe is welded into the hull and protrudes upward to stop above the water level on the outside of the boat. On top of the pipe is a brass valve used to turn the water on and off. On top of that is a PVC end cap that can be removed if necessary, allowing a piece of stiff wire to be pushed down the pipe to clear any debris or small fish that might have got sucked into the pipe. I can't say I've ever had to do this, although once someone had to dive under the boat and pull a fish out of the generator through hull. The pump for the water slide is located inside the main hull area of our boat. However, on our previous boat, it was located in the engine bay next to the through hull. Output from the pump is then piped all the way up to the top of the slide. Lastly, each of the main engines and generator draw water from the lake for cooling. The generator does have a through hull supply with a filter on it, while the main engines have a direct and rather large supply hose coming from the outdrive. The engines do not use pumps like the toilets and water slide. Instead, they have built-in water pumps that use rubber impellers. In the next episode, we will see these when we service the engines. On the top deck, you may have noticed a hot tub. I usually fill the hot tub using a hose from the dock and empty it the same way, siphoning the water out with the same hose. We normally leave the hot tub full as it seems to get used just about all year round. Well, that's our look at the water systems on a houseboat. Join us in episode 5 when we will cover the mechanical systems. We'll look at engines, generators, thrusters and controllers and their maintenance requirements. Cheers mates.